Good morning. Welcome to Current Scam World. In this video, let us study ESCA and XPS photoelectron spectroscopy. What is the principle, instrumentation, and applications? We will discuss in detail. So, what is ESCA, electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis? It is also called photoelectron spectroscopy (PES). There are three types of ESCA photoelectron spectroscopy. One, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. It uses soft X-rays to strike on the sample to eject core level electrons and thereby to study the core level of the target. Next, UV photoelectron spectroscopy. In this, UV light is signed on the sample which ejects valency cell electrons. So, it is used to study the valence band of the sample. Third, auger electron spectroscopy, it is AES. It uses electron beam to fall on the sample to eject auger electrons. The emitted photoelectrons are called auger electrons to study the composition of the surface. Okay, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy is also known as ESCA. It is a widely used technique to study the chemical composition of surfaces. Okay, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy is based on photoelectric effects. It was developed in the middle of 1960 by Hay Bond and his research team at the University of Uppsala in Sweden. In this XPS, X-ray is allowed to fall on the sample target. Okay. The high energy X-rays eject an electron from its core K shell or one N1 shell. Okay. The emitted electrons are called photoelectrons whose kinetic energy are measured and recorded using ESCA spectrometer. So, PES is based on photoelectric effect. As you see, incident X-ray ejects an electron from the coarse shell. We have valence band, conduction band, in between valence band, conduction band, Fermi level and the electron is free to move. Okay this above this level. XPS spectral lines or PES lines are identified by the cell from which the electron, photoelectron is ejected. For example, uh, carbon, let us take this carbon, okay, carbon 1s, so carbon 1s. The line XPS spectral lines correspond to carbon oneness. Okay, the ejected photoelectron has kinetic energy. How do you calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron? See, kinetic, a part of the energy is used, used to, to dislodge, used to, to uh, expel, eject an electron. Okay, so a part of the energy is used against binding energy of the electron. So, it should be subtracted kinetic energy equal to H nu minus binding energy minus phi. Phi is called spectrometer work function. We will explain further here what is phi, why it is used. For gaseous substance, for gases, binding energy is equal to ionization energy. Okay, That is binding energy is equal to According to Hoopman's theorem, binding energy is equal to negative of orbital energy. For example, K shell energy. 
binding energy is equal to minus Keyshev energy for gases. According to Hoopman's theorem, binding energy corresponds to negative of orbital energy. However, in solid, in bulk, bulk matter, uh, it is associated in gaseous state. The molecules are uh, free. Whereas in solid they are associated, so an additional energy must be supplied to remove an electron from the surface that is called spectrometer or work function phi. Okay. Now during this process, auger electrons, small quantity of small amount of auger electrons are also emitted. Okay, what are the conditions and the scales used in XPS? The frequency of X-ray photon used should be greater or equal to core level energy. Okay, if the energy of photon X-ray photon is very low, then no photo emission occurs. Second, the number of photo electrons emitted is directly proportional to the intensity of the X-ray photons. Okay. If more the intensity, the number of photo electrons will be large. Then there are two scales, kinetic energy scale and the potential energy scale, in which X, XPS spectra are plotted. In kinetic energy scale, the intensity of electrons emitted is plotted against kinetic energy in the in the x axis okay in binding energy scale the number of photo electrons emitted is plotted against binding energy okay in the x axis so kinetic energy is equal to we have seen already kinetic energy is equal to h nu minus binding energy binding energy minus phi so let us write here let us take binding energy here kinetic energy here so binding energy equal to h nu okay you bring it here binding energy take out bind take out binding energy okay so this expression is used binding energy is binding energy of the electron in the atom b it depends on the type of the element atom and its environment and oxidation state also the binding energy scale is most often used to compare easily the various chemical states iron iron 3 for example okay and give directly the chemical shifts values and then the spectral line the peak positions that are used to, to identify the elements present and their chemical composition the peak position that is binding energy the kinetic energy of electrons uh, each element um, emits photo electrons of different kinetic energies so the peak positions are used to, to identify the elements present and their chemical composition similar to nmr in ESCA, we also use chemical shift. Chemical shift is also used in ESCA. It is defined as the change in the binding energy of the electrons of the same element carbon in different environment. You see, in this compound, carbon is in different environment and differently bonded. For example, carbon is bonded to fluorine. Okay. and fluorine is more electronegative so electron is attracted towards fluorine therefore binding energy will be very high you see here this is the hydrocarbon this is the hydrocarbon carbon the binding energy of uh, this is the oneness electron is expelled okay so the binding energy of oneness orbital electron in hydrocarbon in CH3 group is 285 and carbon bound to fluorine so with the increase in electronegativity 
the binding energy increases the binding energy increases you see in carbonyl group it is a double bond so and 288 the binding energy okay it is and similarly so using chemical sift we can identify the functional group for example carbonyl group or it is hydrocarbon okay and also which element carbon is bonded it can be the informations can be obtained from the chemical sift similar to chemical sifts there are elemental sifts for example different elements have different binding energies for the same shell same electrons for example iron the binding energy for 2p orbital electron 707 for cobalt and zinc you see this is uh, the element next to uh, iron in the same period okay as we go right to left in the same period okay what happened what happens the binding energy increases okay so different elements have different binding energy for the same cell electrons as shown in table this occurs due to different electron nuclear nuclear interactions attractions thus it helps to identify the different elements in sk okay let us now see the instrumentation of x ray photoelectron spectrometer it consists of the following elements one ultra high vacuum chamber to remove oxygen atmospheric gases otherwise uh, electron x ray will uh, interact with the, these atmospheric gases and two x ray source is used to produce x rays to fall on the sample and electromagnetic lenses electromagnetic electron optics electromagnetic lenses to focus electrons to focus electrons and pass through the hemispherical energy analyzer hea electrostatic energy analyzer in this case called hemispherical energy analyzer they are used to, to see here they are used to, to split or separate the photoelectrons based on their kinetic energy and it is allowed to fall on the photoelectrons are allowed to fall on photo multiplier tube photoelectron multiplier to amplify the signal then it is detected by using position sensitive detector then it is fed to it is fed to computer system for data acquisition analysis and plotting this is the simplified schematic diagram of x ray spectrometer okay this is very easy to draw in the exam so here the same thing sample x ray source and electron optics electromagnetic lenses and hemispherical energy analyzer and computer system photo, um, photo multiplier and detector okay let us discuss the applications of xps esca and aes are very important tools to investigate the molecular composition of elemental composition of surface morphologies and their electronic properties it can also be used to, to distinguish between different elements and also same element in the different environment it is also used to, to identify the functional groups for example co nh2 and their oxidation states 
ferrous ferric or iron for example the energy required to remove from fe2 plus fe3 plus or more than iron and then xps showed that the pigment used on mummy wrapping was lead oxide rather than iron oxide it was earlier thought believed that uh, the pigment used was fe2o3 and now xps showed that it is found to contain lead oxide it is a non destructive method it provides qualitative as well as quantitative information on all elements except hydrogen and helium it all it is also used to find out the contaminating elements for example in solar cell fabrication reduction of sno2 to sn occurred at the interface during deposition during sno2 deposition this unwanted reduction occurred at the interface and this reduces the solar cell efficiency it can be detected by using xps spectrometer thank you for watching please share and subscribe thank you again